Hello and welcome to our research and innovation update at APHA 2021 virtual. I hope what you hear today about our work will continue to inspire you about the passion that we have for advancing the mission of the foundation and specifically uh, not only what we're doing, but how we're doing it and how we stick to our values of collaborating strategically, um, trying to innovate in a very smart way and trying to produce uh, impact that leads to real transformation in pharmacy practice. Our research and innovation is focused on delivering value for the profession of pharmacy and for the APHA enterprise. These initiatives over the years have been all about patient-centered, team-based care, and ostensibly all of the great things that can happen when you get the pharmacist well integrated into that team. If I had just one slide to talk about our research and innovation work from, this would probably be it. If you've attended APHA meetings in the past, it also probably looks a bit familiar. You know we're all about doing the right things well, and we're big Don Abedian fans, so it's all about structure, process, and outcomes. We take a principle-centered approach to creating models that focus on what needs to be done uh, in each practice that's implementing across the country to create consistency and predictability in the patient experience, while simultaneously arming those practices with tools and resources to make decisions about their own how which in the end contributes to the best outcomes possible for the patients that we all serve. We also know that it's really important to align all of the incentives, and we believe and know from our work that getting it right for patients, for healthcare professionals and payers is essential in the mix of creating sustainable, market-driven, patient-centered, team-based care programs. We move along our innovation arc within each one of these contexts, taking a good idea and moving it along the arc toward a national implementation. And you know we're big fans of inventing that preferred future that we're all seeking. And so we uh, ascribe to Alan Kay's notion of the best way to predict the future is to invent it. 2020 was an extraordinary year on so many different levels. The global pandemic changed the way that we all worked and interacted, but we're proud to say that consistent with our research and innovation in years past, we were able to once again meet and exceed our net budget goals. I'll talk a bit more in a moment on the following slide about our flagship prevention work in the CDC 1705 initiative. We continued with multiple efforts to improve care for patients with cardiovascular health challenges and as an enterprise, together, we leaned into new proposals in the population health arena. In short, we believe that Project Impact Diabetes Prevention presents an unparalleled opportunity for us to really invent that preferred future that we're seeking. It's an opportunity to change the landscape of how the national DPP is delivered in communities across the country Pharmacies provide this incredible omni-channel access point in local communities. We have this unique multimodal delivery model using teams of lifestyle coaches in an integrated fashion like none other. We have a model that emphasizes meeting participants where they are and not only doing that um, as the initial decisions are made to participate in the program, but also um, following on and as life unfolds in front of people uh, as they participate in the year long program, they have flexibility and options to make adjustments based on their own needs in their life. And so this support um, throughout the program, we think is going to be one of the hallmarks for helping people to make sure that they're able to achieve their goals and ultimately improve the quality of their health and their lives. Our work with the Improving Health Outcomes Division at the American Medical Association continues. Through a multi-year collaboration with the AMA, we have helped to envision and support the creation of a new validated blood pressure device listing of BP devices that have been validated for clinical accuracy through an independent review process. 
This important work and interprofessional collaboration has resulted in the availability of a universal resource that helps both consumers and healthcare professionals to make informed decisions about measurement devices that consistently produce precise and accurate blood pressure results. Check it out at validatebp.org. We also continue our collaborations on cardiovascular health. Uh, so uh, among the new efforts, we're currently exploring uh, the valid blood pressure database um, uh, opportunities with the CDC, uh, looking for those um, high quality blood pressure measurements and how we can integrate that into the work that many are doing across the country. Uh, we also serve on the National Forum's Value and Access Steering Committee and um, uh, have been a a uh, key collaborator in producing uh, the first and uh, subsequent shared decision-making tools for patients and providers. So those are really exciting resources uh, that are available through the National Forum uh, that help to support patient-centered team-based care and that shared decision-making that goes on within the context of that care. We also serve on um, uh, uh, CDC's um, uh, consultation team for the Cardiovascular Community Guide, and we're pursuing new partnership integrations in Million Hearts 2.0 um, and with the CDC Foundation. The results from our pilot effort in Project Impact Immunizations have set the stage for future growth. The industry data that we had at the time said that only one to 2% of patients getting an influenza vaccine get any kind of other vaccines. So in the initial pilot with the program that we implemented in one state with eight different community practices, essentially we had a 41.4% increase in the number of vaccines that were administered beyond the influenza vaccine. So this shows that the pharmacist's role in um, identifying and addressing unmet needs is particularly compelling. So compelling, in fact, that the FIP honored Project Impact Immunizations with, this, with its prestigious International Pharmacy Practice Improvement Award in 2018. This slide provides a snapshot of our active research and innovation in 2021 at a glance. So in addition to everything that you've just heard about, uh, the highlighted or bold italics items in the list are the net new things that you should expect from us in calendar year 2021. We've got a new initiative uh, in conjunction with the CDC on a cooperative agreement for addressing vaccine confidence that we'll be implementing a new demonstration project with. Um, we've got a uh, newly funded initiative in the area of continuous glucose monitoring, where we'll be convening a round table uh, to develop some consensus around usage in type one diabetes. We've also got an evolution going on with our impact care transformation network and stay tuned for some new impact network solutions announcements uh, that'll be coming throughout 2021 as our practice-based research network evolves into the impact care transformation network and helps us all to invent that preferred future that we're seeking. So I'd like to close with a huge thank you. It's your generosity and support that makes our research and innovation possible. We hope that this presentation has been inspiring and we look forward to our continued efforts to work together with you and your colleagues and everyone else in the healthcare delivery system to help us change the way that care is delivered and ultimately to improve the lives of those that we all serve.